Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements project. And this time I'll be using Photoshop Elements to remove this white background from this JPEG image right over here. That will then give us this. And there's a specific way to do this to get the best possible results with Photoshop Elements. And once that's done, we'll then use Photoshop Elements to come over here and then colorize that image, ending up with this final product. Okay, now I have the download for this on my website. I'll put a link for that in the description so you can download this directly. And let's go ahead and do that now. Using the link in the description, we'll take you right to the image like this. You can see there's a link right there. And then right click on this and save image as, and save it to a location on your computer. I have one here, I just set this up as projects and I'll save it right there. There we go, that's now saved on my computer, on my hard drive. We can now open this up in Photoshop Elements. So let's go up to file, come down to open, and then find your folder and there's your image. Choose open and there we go. But I'll just go ahead and I'll dock that up there. Now, as always, the first thing I do is to make a duplicate of the background layer. Let's go over here to background, right click on background, duplicate layer, choose okay, and then hide the original. This is just a safety, just in case we mess things up, we can always come back to the original right there. It's saved inside the project. Now I have two choices in here on doing this. We can either select an area, the white area, and then delete that or we can select the black area and use a layer mask. And that's actually the better option on this one. And I'll explain why. Let's just zoom in on this image. Doesn't matter where you zoom in, but if you zoom in real close, you can see here that the edge isn't a perfect black and white. It actually has some gray values in there. So if we chose the white area, we would then have a bit of a gray outline around this thing, and that would cause us some problems. So it's better to select our black area and then make an adjustment for that to clean up that fringing that's around your image. It'll give you the cleanest looking image. So for that, easy to do. We'll grab the magic wand tool. It's set here at a new selection and I have my tolerance real low on this. This will help get rid of a good amount of that fringing, but not all of it. So it's a good starting point. And then over here where it says contiguous, this is normally checked, uncheck that. You also don't want anti-aliasing. This will also be giving you a bit of a gradient on your edges. So keep everything here unchecked. And then find a nice pure black area. Click into a black area like right in here in the middle of the flowers. And this selects just the black in the whole image. It's getting a little bit of the gray, but mostly just the black. And now go over to the layers panel right hand side. Click on this button right here. This will make a layer mask for that. And the layer mask hides the white background. And that looks really good. We've already taken care of most of that project right there, but it isn't quite finished yet. We still haven't solved that problem with a little bit of fringing. And I can show you that. I'll come down here to the background layer, go up here to new layer. There we go. And then grabbing the paint bucket over here and black as the foreground color, click inside this. And that then fills this layer with a solid black. And now you can see anything in here that is not actually black. So there's still a lot of gray values in that image. And that we can fix. Okay, let's now adjust the values of our image in here to convert that gray into black. So I'll get rid of this layer here. We don't need that any longer. We're done with that. And let's go up here, make sure you're on your image layer. Left-hand side, look for your light blue outline. And then go up here to the Enhance menu, come down to Adjust Lighting and choose Levels. And the Levels control, notice we have this control over here, right-hand side, that's the white. Left-hand side is your blacks. This is your mid-tone. We wanna have everything in the image black. So grab the left-hand side, put it clear to the right, and that converts anything in here to a black scale, to a black value, and get sort of all that little bit of grayness in there on the edges, so choose OK. And that cleans up that image. It's now a good solid black on all of those edges. Okay, that's the first part of this. We now have removed that background. Now we need to put in coloration in here, and there are a couple ways to do this. I'll show you the easy way first, and then I'll show you my preferred technique, and I'll show you why that's my preferred technique. Before we do anything here, go over here to this new layer, right click where it says background copy, duplicate layer, choose OK, and hide that step. That hides our in-between stage. And here's why I want to save that. We're on our top layer right now, right click where it says background copy to, and simplify layer. That merges the layer mask in with the original image and gives us just the black lines on a transparent background. So just in case I had to make any fixes on there, I've still saved that one step right here. So always a good idea to save steps. You can always delete this when you finish the project, when you no longer need it, but just in case I'm still working on it, I'll keep this one as a saved layer. 
Okay, now one way to come in and colorize a black and white, and this works out well if everything is totally enclosed, is to choose your color. Let's just choose something kind of nice mid yellows in here like that, and the paint bucket, and then click into an area, and it then fills that area. You can just go around and do this very quickly. If you're in a hurry, this is a good way to go. But if there are any breaks in the outline, the fill color is gonna spill out and fill everything else. So there are some dangers with this particular technique. The other problem here is I can't go back and easily change anything here. It's locked onto that one layer. So I'll use the Control Z keyboard shortcut. I'll back out of this. There we go. And let's now do a technique that allows us to ignore any breaks in edges. It won't make any difference. And also it will allow us to go back and change the colors at any point later on. So much more flexible. It's more work, but it's much more flexible and that gives you a better final result. I'm just going to zoom in here on our main flower like that, nice and close. Here's our other flower up there. And let's grab a selection tool. I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool. Set this at new. Feathering is at zero. Anti-aliasing doesn't actually matter on this one. And let's choose a starting point. Notice choose right here. And then I'll come in and I'll go right in the middle of this area here. And I'll make a selection right around the whole flower, just like this. Hold the space bar down to move your image. And then continue on around. Now we don't have to go clear to the inside on these. All I have to do is just do the outside boundary of where the flower is. And we'll clear around. I'll do this for a couple of areas so you can see the technique. And then I'll finish things up off screen because this will take me several minutes to do this. So we'll just do the example right now and then I'll show you the final finished bit afterwards. Okay, clear up and around here. Notice there's these little white specks. I'm keep leaving those in, but I'm keeping those colorized. I'm making those inside of my selection. You can fix those two ways. Either leave them in and colorize them or you can just take some black paint and paint them out. Whatever you feel like doing. Each image will have its own particular problems like that. This one, I'm leaving those in and I think they're fine. Okay, back to the beginning. There's our selection. And let's just get that centered a bit better. Here we are. And I'll back out just a little bit on that one flower. There we go. Okay, so we have our selection. We're on that layer. We have our orange color over here. Now all you have to do is go up to the layer menu. This is just for a clipping mask. You want this unchecked, that's correct. And now watch what happens when I click on OK and it actually does this. There we go. It goes in and it fills that in with that color and our selection gave me a layer mask. At this point, I can choose a different color, but I'll leave this, choose OK. Now it came in on top and we can fix that easily enough. Just take this layer, drag it down like that so it's underneath. And there we go, we've now colorized that area. Let's do this flower up here and then I'll do these in-between bits. Hold the space bar down, let's move this right here. And I want a little different color here. Now for this one, come down to the layer underneath our color layer. And that's this thing here, it's a hidden layer, but just come down. This will then let us see our color left-hand side. Let's click on that. And I'm going to make this a little bit more red, a little more red like that, just a bit darker, a little bit more red. Choose OK. And then the exact same thing back to the polygonal lasso tool. And let's make our selection right around this flower. Sometimes you may have to squint a little bit to figure out exactly where the edges are. You can zoom in if you have to, or sometimes zooming out makes it a bit more obvious so you can see it in context. But just come around. Now when you're using the polygonal lasso tool, don't click too quickly. If you do, it's going to close your selection and mess things up. You have to start over again. So give it a beat each time you place a point, each time you click, before you place your next point, and you'll then have no problems with this tool. So it's a very precise tool, easy to use, actually. You just have to give it a moment each time you make a click for it to work properly. Okay, come back around to the beginning. There's our selection. We have our new color already. So let's go up here to Layer, come down to New Fill Layer, Solid Color. Same thing, choose OK, and there we go, it fills that with that new color. All right, now we have these two centers in here, this bit here and this bit there. I wanna have these a bright yellow. So exact same technique, come down to the layer underneath, that's this layer here, our background copy layer. Over here, 
choose your color and I think I'll just choose something right in here or if you want to you can go up to the window menu come down to color swatches and choose a color from here I think I like this yellow right here it's a, just a little bit more solid it's a CMYK yellow okay so we have our yellow I'll come over to the left hand side flower first and let's make a selection around that middle piece doesn't have to match the shape exactly it just has to be inside of the black that surrounds that now at this point we need to add a second selection up here so come down to options down below and click on this button here this is the add to selection button and let's now make our second selection right around the middle of this flower so you can come in and add more areas to a selection so we now have two areas selected and the same exact trick go up to layer come down to new fill layer and choose solid color choose okay and there we go now we're not seeing anything here again because the layer is now underneath these two layers so your layer stacking is important on this project this has to be on top so grab this and pull it above the other color layers and now we have our nice bright yellow in the middle okay it's all easy to do I'm going to back up just a little bit control zero to fit screen and I'll do the exact same thing for the other flowers and I'll just change the color a little bit each time we have all of these leaves and stems in here a big leaf in here is a stem here there's a leaf over here a leaf over here some stuff going on down in here there's a leaf in here there's a flower here and some leaves in here so there's a lot of this leaf stuff that can all be the same green color but my approach when it's like this when it's kind of all over the place is I'll do it in pieces instead of trying to do the whole thing at once trying to get all of that into one selection I'll just do a whole bunch of layers and do it in segments now let's do just one of these so you see what I mean and we'll do this one right up here let me back out just a little bit on that so get the whole leaf in same thing come down to this layer back to the polygonal lasso tool and I'll make my selection inside the black and this has longer almost straight areas so I can make my dots a lot further apart just making this a lot faster and easier but again even though you can do it faster like that still make sure you give it a beat between each time you click so that you don't accidentally close that selection I'm going to show you what happens real fast I'll just double click here and it does that notice how the selection is good over here I did it but it then goes back up here to the starting point I have this big selection part over here which is wrong so just make sure you don't click too fast with this tool and you should be just fine okay let's just get this back in again this one again is fast and easy because it's a real basic shape and up around this petal right down here and on the bottom side like that don't worry about coming in and overlapping the other color because you're on a different layer as long as you're inside of that black you're just fine on this and back up around in here back up to the beginning again and get real close just double click and that closes that selection let's now choose a nice green color for this I'll go up here into the greens and something like that that's kind of a nice cheerful green choose okay once again layer come down to new fill layer solid color choose okay and there we go and I'll use the control zero to fit screen again so that's how I would approach these leaves I just do them one section at a time instead of trying to do them all at once it's much more controlled that way it gives me more layers over here but that's not really important okay so let's just assume that I've finished this whole thing and I will get this all finished for the end of the video I'll pause the video for a minute and I'll finish that and come back again let's say you wanted to change the coloration of this flowering here here's one of the reasons why I like having this with this technique where I have layer masks and color layers if I wanted to change the color of this flower let's go over to this layer that's this one right here you can double check by showing and hiding the layer double click on the color swatch this brings back up the color picker and I can now choose a different color in here from the color picker let's say I wanted to have a little more of a a pink color kind of a a light pink maybe like that I can easily just choose a new color and there we go I've changed the color in the image so it's that easy to change colors if you have them all separated out onto their own separate layers as I have them over here on the right hand side I'm just going to cancel that because I do want to have that yellow orange in here okay I'm just going to pause the video for a minute here I'll go in and finish colorizing the rest of these I'll then bring it back up and we'll talk about the last steps okay I finished off all the colorization on this thing a couple of things left to do 
First one is if you want to have something in the background again, let's say you want white back here, or possibly a color or a gradient, easy to do. Just come down here to the layer that's underneath our background copy layer right here. Make a new layer. There we go, here's our new layer. And then just fill that with whatever you want. If you want white, let's just go over here and set our foreground color to white. Use our paint bucket and fill that with white. And there's our nice new white background. Now, because it's a separate layer, I can show or hide that. Let's make a new layer above this. And this time let's put a gradient in here. Go up to the gradient tool. And come down and click on the gradient itself right down here in the options. This brings up the gradient editor. And you can choose from all kinds of different colorizations for your background. Let's just come down here and take a look at color harmonies one. Don't care for that. Let's come down to pastels. And that's pretty good. Let me just choose this pastel right there. Choose OK. Then I'll go up here to the upper left hand corner a bit and then pull down towards the right hand bottom corner. And that puts in a nice pastel background. And last step, of course, is to save your file. Now, because of all these layers, it's going to be saving as a Photoshop or a PSD file. Right now, it's still sitting as JPEG up here. So go up to File, come down to Save. We're still in our Projects folder. It automatically converts that into a PSD or Photoshop file, which is fine. Choose Save. And now, if you wanted to use this on the internet, then you want to have either a JPEG or a PNG. Now, if you're using a solid background color, then either one is fine. If though you want that transparency in here, then you have to save it as a PNG file because JPEG doesn't have transparency. So go up here to File, come down to Save As, and we'll just choose the PNG file format and save our transparency that way. Choose Save and OK, and that's now done. And last thing, if you want to print your file out, you can ignore anything over here left-hand side. Don't worry about all your layers. It'll print just fine. Go over to File, come down to Print, and there's your print dialog box right there. And you can then go ahead and print right here. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Also, check out my channel for a bunch more Photoshop Elements videos. I have hundreds of Photoshop Elements videos over there. And if you really want to learn how to use this project, then I recommend taking a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.